Chapter 6 1066, The Battle That Changed History The big question to think about as I'm reading is, how did the Battle of Hastings change history? It is October 14th in the year 1066 CE, near the small coastal town of Hastings, England. At the top of a rolling hill known as Senlac Hill, thousands of foot soldiers stood in a line. At around 9 o'clock a.m. on this autumn day, hundreds of years ago, English soldiers prepared to battle an invading army. What happened next changed the course of English history. The English soldiers formed a shield wall at the top of Seniac Hill. The English soldiers, led by their King Harold, stood at least 7,000 strong. However, these brave and loyal soldiers had recently marched about 200 miles. They came from the north of England, where they had already fought an invading, an invading force. Though victorious, these soldiers were tired. As they stood on the hill, the English soldiers could see that they faced a large, well-equipped Norman army. The Normans, who came from a region of France, had approximately 10,000 men. They had thousands of skilled archers. They also had thousands of foot soldiers and knights who fought on horseback. The English, however, had mostly foot soldiers armed with simple weapons, such as bows and arrows, axes, spears, swords, and daggers. Nevertheless, the English army was, the English line was strong. What they lacked in energy, they made up for in determination. They stood with their shields raised, creating a strong shield wall. From their position on top of Senlac Hill, they made it almost impossible for the Norman archers to penetrate this wall. The English soldiers marched about 200 miles to reach the battle site. Here it's showing where they're marching. The Normans needed to change their tactics. William, Duke of Normandy, and leader of the invading army, sent his knights charging up the hill. The English responded with arrows, spears, and even stones. They forced the Norman knights to retreat. The English soldiers once again defended their position, still unable to break the wall. The Norman knights retreated. Seeing this, some English soldiers broke the wall and pursued the fleeing knights. This proved to be a fatal mistake. The English shield wall now had gaps in it. Throughout the day, Norman attacks and retreats drew the English soldiers out of their positions, and more and more English soldiers left their positions on Senlac Hill. They encountered Norman knights on horseback. The knights surrounded them. Then King Harold was killed. Although the English soldiers fought bravely, the Norman knights charged up the hill without charged up the hill. Without a strong defensive line, the Norman knights were able to overwhelm the English soldiers. What was ultimately an eight hour bloody battle ended with a Norman victory. The Duke of Normandy and his army had defeated the English. So here they're showing the death of King Harold. And then up here this says Bayeux Tapestry section showing English foot soldiers and mounted Normans. So that's something that somebody made. They sewed together its tapestry to um, depict what happened during the battles. Although victorious, William could not yet pronounce himself king. He and his soldiers began to march to the capital city of London. They chose to follow the old Roman road to London. All the way, William met little resistance until he reached the capital. The first real armed resistance came when Normandy arrived at London Bridge. This bridge was the only way across the river into the city. Instead of fighting, William decided to send his soldiers into the surrounding countryside to burn the local villages. Fearing mass destruction, a number of important English lords surrendered and vowed to be loyal to William. Here is William with his nobles. On Christmas Day in Westminster Abbey, in the year 1066 CE, the Norman Duke was crowned King William I of England. From that moment on, he became known as William the Conqueror. Why did the Battle of Hastings take place? It took place because Harold and William each believed he was the true King of England. There could be only one victor, and in the end, it was William. Here's William as King. 
About 20 years after the Battle of Hastings, William decided that he wanted to know how rich England was. He wanted to know how much money people had in order to determine what taxes he could collect. William ordered officials from different countries to ride out across the land to find out. Although these men did not visit every location or record every piece of property, they did collect a lot of information. They sent the information to the king's clerks who recorded it in two books. These books later became known as Great Doomsday and Little Doomsday. Today, we simply refer to these books as the Doomsday Book. Here are pictures from the Doomsday Book. Bio Tapestry. The Bio Tapestry is a medieval embroidered cloth that tells the story of the Norman Conquest. The story is told in Latin text and beautiful images that were embroidered onto 231 feet of linen cloth. The Bayou Tapestry is believed to have been commissioned around the year 1075 CE by a member of William's family. Much of what we know about the Battle of Hastings is because of this extraordinary tapestry. In the top image, you can see William the Conqueror on horseback. In the bottom image, you can see English soldiers defending themselves against Norman cavalry using a shield wall. If you were an archer, you are family farms land for the Lord. You work from sunrise to sunset, tending to the crops and animals. However, you are not only a freeman, you are also a young warrior, at least you hope to be. You are the son, grandson, and nephew of the skillful archers. You too are training to be an archer or long bowman. It is the law in England that you practice this skill. You have been learning the skills needed to be an archer since you learned how to walk. Your first longbow and set of arrows were carved from the wood of a yew tree. Your older brother gave them to you. Your mother made your quiver. At the very first glimmer of light, you run to the training field. You and the other boys your age love to practice hitting the set targets. You love to hear the cries, ready your bows, knock, mark, draw, loose. Before the sun sets, you return to practice until your target is lost in the darkness. As each day ends, you return home, dreaming of becoming the best marksman in all of England. These are boys practicing archery. The changing of a language. You might not realize it, but you, too, have been affected by William's victory over the Anglo-Saxon people of England. Before the Normans conquered this kingdom, Germanic tribes who invaded England after the Romans left spoke Anglo-Saxon or Old English. William and his lords spoke Norman French and Latin. After his victory, William invited many people from his native land to settle in England. Over time, these languages were blended together and became what is called Middle English in the Middle English. In the 1300s, Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales in Middle English. If William had not defeated King Harold, we might be speaking a different language. Anglo-Saxon words. Anglo-Saxon words usually have one or two syllables, and many Anglo-Saxon words are still recognizable. Can you match each Anglo-Saxon word to the correct picture? You can pause it right here and see if you can match these words with the pictures below. Medieval musings. War was a constant part of life in the Middle Ages. Men had to be able to fight often to the death. Below are a number of medieval weapons of war. Match the weapons to the descriptions that follow. A. This kind of weapon was used in hand-to-hand -hand combat by knights. B. This was an interesting weapon because it was used to launch all kinds of objects over long distances as well as over castle walls. For example, stones, burning oil, and animal dung and plague-ridden dead bodies were launched into the air. Oh my God. C. This was perhaps the weapon of choice in England in the Middle Ages. Archers were expected to be expert marksmen. Archers spent a great deal of time training. In England, in the 1200s, a law was passed stating that all men between the ages of 15 and 60 years old must have these weapons and know how to use them. These partner weapons were used by knights and some foot soldiers. And here's the letter quest. Find the letter in the stained glass window and record it on activity page 2.3.